question is this, how do most agents who don't have access to the secrets the top agents in our industry hoard themselves, grow and prosper in today's real estate market? That's the question, and this podcast will give you the answer. Hi, I'm Aaron Muchastegui, and welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. Hi, Real Estate Rockstars, this is Aaron Muchastegui, and I am so excited to share with you our newest head podcast sponsor. You know, and this is a company called Rent Ready. Rent Ready is a landlord tenant software that has everything you need to manage your rentals from your phone or your computer. No need to be tech savvy, download multiple programs, or hire a specialist. Rent Ready is easy to use for everyone. And if you do have a question, their customer support team is available to make sure managing your properties doesn't have to be harder than it already is. Rent Ready has a feature for every step of the landlord process. You can list your vacancy for free to realtor.com and doorsteps, find quality tenants with a full tenant screening process, send and e-sign leases right from the app, and track maintenance requests. Yes, there really is one app for all of that. Best of all, not only is Rent Ready easy to use with awesome customer service, but it's affordable as well. Get a subscription of Rent Ready for as little as $1 a year when you sign up for their annual plan using code ROCKSTAR. Right? That, now that's crazy, a dollar a year Why wouldn't you go sign up just to see, even if you've got one tenant or want to try it with one of them? So that's right. You get a whole year of Rent Ready for just $1 when you sign up at rentready.com. It's spelled R-E-N-T-R-E-D-I.com using code ROCKSTAR. Okay, Rockstar Nation, I have a great guest who has been on the show before, and a lot of people have asked for him to come back. He's one of the most downloaded episodes. Paul Morris, who shared with us the business secrets or the the failures of what not to do in business, or or the, the, I think he called them the brain damages of business. One of the best episodes we've had. And he's back because he's written a new book that's, that's due out in the spring. And Part of his research into getting rich, into creating wealth, is as the formal term is, has shown that there's really six major steps or pillars or whatever you want to call it to getting rich, to having money, to keeping money, to maintaining money. And I've asked him to come on and share those six major things of how not only to get rich, but to stay rich. So without further ado, Paul, welcome back to Pat Hyben Interviews Real Estate Rockstars. Thanks, Pat. I really appreciate it. Uh, Thanks for that opportunity. Last time we did the six pillars, and really that was a business analysis thing. And I hope that folks that haven't heard it will go back and listen because I've gotten great feedback too, and I love the emails uh, that I get about it. But today, uh, today I'm talking about wealth building. And one of the interesting things is uh, what I do for a living is I'm an operating principal, which means broker owner of Keller Williams offices. And I have about 10 offices inside of those 10 offices. We have phenomenal realtors. We have phenomenal talent. And one of the things that I figured out quickly was that salespeople, while having the ability to generate income, great salesperson can generate, can generate income. Amazing how few of them actually retain it and build it into wealth. So often you'll find folks that even make a lot of money at the end of their career. Where are they? So that brought me to uh, creating a curriculum, which I teach and that, that teaching is wealth building. And then that became the foundation together with my co-author David Osborne uh, in writing wealth can't wait. So what I'm going to share with you today is five steps for wealth building. And my goal inside of this five steps, is that, first of all, each one standalone. So uh, you, don't have to do, you don't have to do all five. If you take one of them and do it, I believe that each of these steps are a shortcut to building wealth. So Wow. Let so, me- so everyone loves getting rich, obviously, and they want to get rich. So let's jump through it. So what's the first one? Yeah. And, I, you know, and, I, and just as a foundational piece, you know, one of the things, it's, it's, it's so obvious. Okay, so if you want to be wealthy, how about this? Here's the formula. We don't even have to have this call. If you, want to be, if you want to be wealthy, just spend less than you earn, okay? We all know that's true, and yet it's so much more complicated. So what I've done is these are the things, these are the things that, I've, that I've learned over a journey of time that have actually helped me do this. I have a salesperson behavioral style as well, so I'm good at generating income. 
guess what else? I love to spend money along with the next guy. So, so let me, so let me dive right in. And, and number one is find your baseline. Find and finding your base, baseline. Okay. What does yes, that mean? Find your baseline. And I break that down into two parts and it's, it's part of it is just treating yourself like a corporation. So the first thing to do is create a personal financial statement. Uh, you can do this one of two ways. You can actually do it in a very sophisticated way. Just get a, get a personal financial statement from any mortgage broker. Now I don't even do that. All I do is I use, you know, very old school. I use a word document. I take all of my assets. What is the current value of stuff that if I sold it right now today, if I have a, uh, a home that's worth $400,000, like really you could sell it today for $400,000 for real. And I've got a $300,000 mortgage. Very simple. hundred thousand dollars goes into my asset line. If I owe $20,000 on my credit card, that's a liability. If I owe $30,000 in school loans, that's a liability. Yeah, now, but how is it, what you, what's that have to do with baseline? Okay. So what I'm talking about in terms of baseline is create an awareness of where you currently stand in your wealth building world. So get a conscious okay. consciousness of, am I below the even or above even? If I'm, you know, if my, if every dollar I make gets eaten by bills and I owe more than I have equity in my house, you know, I owe more than I have saved and I'm below that baseline. And, and I think what you're saying is try to get at that baseline and then incrementally get above that baseline over and over and over and over again. Right. Well, that's, that's exactly correct. And, and what I mean by what directly I mean by baseline is where are you today right now? What is your, what is your financial health today? If you were going to buy a corporation, if you were going to buy a company, you would want to know, and it's why publicly traded companies are required to do this. They have a balance sheet. What are their, what are all their assets? What are all of their liabilities? If we really want to build wealth, this is, this is, this is, I was going to say the first step it doesn't have to be the first step. It's definitely a step that will help yeah. you. Rockstar Nation. This is Aaron Amuchastegui. Hey, I hate to interrupt the current podcast that you're listening to, but I am so excited to share this with you. I just finished interviewing the original host of this podcast, my good friend, Pat Hyben. You know, I got to talk to Pat about how he started his real estate career and a whole bunch of tips and tactics that he used to be successful. So if you haven't listened to it yet, go check out State of the Market number 49 on there. I get to talk to Pat about all those different things. You know, and in there too, he talked a lot about his six steps for seven figures book and training program that he built over the last couple of years. And I realized I haven't done a good enough job of reminding all of you lately about all of the resources that we've built for you out there. So if you want to check out Pat's course, we've got like a three minute summary video when you go to it. It includes so many easy to follow tips that you can follow on it like a day to day basis. You get email reminders, all sorts of different things that come with that course. You find that you go to rebusuniversity.com, R-E-B-U-S, rebusuniversity.com. Look at courses. You can find the six steps for seven figures book. And really, there's a whole bunch of other courses in there, too. Our normal prices used to be fifteen hundred or two thousand dollars a course. These are real deal professional courses. But now uh, during quarantine, a lot of them are priced down to like 90 bucks, 95 bucks. So we've slashed the prices. We know right now is a time for everybody to be focusing on growth and education, especially while they're feeling like they don't have as much to do. And if you go in there and you figure like, like there's a lot of different courses you want, maybe you don't want to buy the a la carte. You can go to future of real estate training.com and you can get access to all of our different courses for 97 bucks a month. I think there's a discount on there if you go a year or there's even like a lifetime option that you can pay. You get access to every course we ever put on Rebus University for as long as we have it. So go check out those options, Rebus University or futureofrealestatetraining.com. All right, back to your podcast. Sorry for the interruption. So have a so have a conscious level of where you are and it's something that I do. A mentor of mine once told me, "Check your net worth, right? Every day." Now, I think that's extreme. Uh, if you check it every month, right there, you have a baseline. Most people have never checked their net worth. So so develop that baseline for your net worth. Okay, cool. What's the second one? That, 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 that's exactly right. And one of the things that's super cool about that is the earliest one that I can find is in, is in November of 2006. That's about nine years ago. And then I looked and I, and I found out that I... That I that I tenfolded, twelve folded my net worth in that period of time. That's a, that's that's a great awareness to have. 
I want to say this to you, Pat. I won't. I won't get off of this one state, this one point, without saying to everybody that there is zero judgment in this. One of the things why people, one of the reasons why people don't do this is because they're afraid of what the truth is. And if you're afraid of what the truth is, it's going to be very, it's going to be much more difficult, not impossible, much more difficult to move the needle. So if you're underwater, that's okay. Just do this exercise. Uh, the second part of finding your baseline, and that, and that actually is very, uh, it's actually a very simple exercise. It's not tough to do. It's even easier to update. It might take you an hour to do the first time. Second time you do it, you'll have that template. You can move forward. I, I personally do it about four or five times a year, and I do it when banks, you know, when I'm investing in something, and banks ask for personal financial statements. So, so that's, that's when I do it naturally. The second step is, um, is your profit and loss. See, now we're, you're really treating yourself like a corporation, okay? And so realtors, even very, very successful realtors, most of them, I'll go out on a limb and say most of them, do not know their profit and loss. Exactly how many gross commission dollars did they bring in, how much they spend on marketing, and all that, all that sort of thing. And I will tell you that this is a much more complicated process. I'll also say that what separates salespeople from business owners is having a profit and loss statement. Um, QuickBooks, manage your own stuff hire a bookkeeper. You can hire a bookkeeper to come help you two hours a week to accomplish this. If you don't feel like you're in a position to do that, um, you know, have, have discipline to do it for, in QuickBooks. Again, one of the things I'll always do for you, Pat, and, and your audience is I'll be authentic. And I will say, uh, personal financial statement, I've been doing that for a long time. It's easy. Uh, profit and loss, I never really truly started to do it until I had an assistant because I needed somebody to enter all that data for me. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. Well, here's the thing. A lot yeah. of people ask me about that. You know, they're, they're, I tell them, I say, hey, you need a profit loss for yourself personally. And they're like, okay. And they hand me something that says, oh, yeah, my my um, utilities are 200 a month. My food is 300 a month. And I say, you know what? That's BS because, you know, these are round numbers ending in zero, zero. I think that <laughs> what you really need to do is look at your personal checking account, not your business checking mm-hmm. account, but your personal checking account. And your bank totals every month something called debits, D-E-B-I-T-S. And if you just look at that one line on your personal bank account every month, you don't need to figure out what your utilities are and what your telephone bill is and blah, blah, blah. You just need to know that is your loss and then look at what is your profit, which is what you're getting from your business. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And, and, and your point is, your point's right on, especially that, you know, if you're going to take a step, and that's what this is all about, is taking steps toward building wealth. Uh, if you're not ready to track every business expense, I understand that. But but I got to tell you, Pat, to do what you said, uh, it, it would be a shame for anybody building wealth to not at least know what their personal. And now I'm going to use a now I'm going to use a a corporate term or or or, or a term that we use for businesses: personal burn rate. What a, a company's burn rate is how, how much money, if they bring in no income, if you bring in zero income, what's the company's burn rate? And so you ought to know your own personal burn rate. And that is, what are, what are my monthly bills? What, what are the things I have to pay out in order to survive? And I certainly know that number for myself. And I want to keep that in check with the amount of income that I'm earning. Um, and as you go further and further down the growth curve, further and further up the wealth building growth curve, you'll find that uh, people are just subsisting. So they're, you know, they're, they're spending every dollar they earn and then they earn a little bit more than they still spend every dollar they earn because they want a little improvement in, in lifestyle. I get that. But at some point in time, you've got to pull that back a little bit and start investing. And that's why the find your baseline, which is your personal financial statement and your Profit and loss are so important. Okay, so what's the third step, Paul? <laughs> and actually, uh, actually, that that was you know, find your baseline is one, and so those two are pieces of one. And so my second one is just to set goals and use affirmations. And and I'm going to be very very quick on this one because everybody, uh, you know, every motivational speaker is going to tell you how to do this. Uh, you can find it out on the internet. I just want to, I want to tell you a few things 
that, that I find to be so important. And one of them is sort of comes off of what you just said when you say, hey, my utility bill is $300. And Pat says, no, it's not. Because it's, it's never $300, okay? The first thing with setting goals is be brutally specific. Do not say, I'm going to increase my GCI 20%. What exactly was your GCI to the penny? And then what is 20% more than that and add them together? Now you've got something that's specific. When I do work with people, smart people, I tell them, please be specific. And, and invariably, I get something back and I send it back to them. I say, I want more specificity. Point two is write them down. Anytime you write the goals down, it's just there's a power for me, okay, in translating. I'm making it more real. I'm just writing it down. Another one is put that written version somewhere that you'll see it often, okay, so that it keeps you in alignment. And now just a few little, uh, a few little you know, fun possibilities is people use a dream board. Uh, that's not one of my things, okay? Uh, because the dream board is all about stuff. And I'm not motivated by stuff as much as I am motivated by other things. So one of the things that I do, which is a little bit unique, is to create a dream budget. And that may, I, I even think that sounds nerdy when I say it, but my dream budget basically is all the things that I'd like to spend money on, which doesn't have to be like cars and fancy wristwatches. It could be, by the way. But it's also to be my daughter's private education, the amount of money that I want to, that I want to put into charity uh, every month. And then I get my total amount of spending on that stuff that I want for myself, on the help that I want to give to my family, my total monthly spending. And then in that budget, my gut check will not let me spend a bunch of money unless I'm also investing. Okay, so if my budget were... Uh, $6,000 a month, and sad to say it's multiples of that. If, if my budget were 6000 a month in terms of what, what I'm looking to spend to have the lifestyle that I want or $20,000 a month, I'm going to want to put a certain amount into my retirement fund. I'm going to want to put a certain amount into my investments per month. And I'm also going to want to set aside for taxes. And when I do all of that, that steps me into the future. So I know... So a dream board where, where you take, okay, so let's take a fancy jet and we'll use Photoshop, if I even know how to use Photoshop, and put my name on the side of it. That, to me, you know, it's cool for other people, no judgment. It's all about the stuff. The dream budget, which, is, which I'm very aware is the nerd version, maybe, of that. The dream budget is very motivational to me. So how much money per month do I need to earn so that I can... I can live a lifestyle I want to live. I can donate to charities and contribute the way I want to contribute to, to third-party charities and my family, that I can pay my taxes when the end of the year comes, that my retirement fund uh, is, my retirement account is funded, and that I have invested the amount of money that at least gives me the gut check for spending the amount of money that I want to spend. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, cool. So you got, you got uh, setting the goals. You've got the baseline. Okay. What else you got? So inside of, you know, inside of the setting goals and using affirmations, you know, and I'll just touch briefly on this, but I do feel like this is one of the most important things. And this is the entire first section of our book and wealth can't wait. And that is be wealth. And it's really the mindset of wealth. Okay. One of the things that I found is that your net worth will never exceed your self worth. And that's a, that's a heavy statement. And whenever I, whenever I teach people go, wow, you know, oh my goodness. Yeah, I could totally see that. But we want to be practical and help people, help people lift that lid. And, and, and so it steps in mindset growth that will help you lift that lid. And there's a, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of different things that you can do in order to do that. But, you know, here's an example. People have all these uh, interesting mindset fallacies around money. So for example, they go, oh, well, once Joe got money, boy, he was a jerk. Oh, Joe is such a jerk now that he has money. The truth is Joe was always a jerk. Now he has money. He gets to be who he really is. What I want for myself and what I want for 
you, Pat, and your listeners is for, for folks to be able to manifest, to, to actualize who they really are. And, and you can do that. And money, money helps you do that. Okay. So I have a devout Christian nephew who's the biggest sweetheart there ever was. And he says, you know, Paul, money isn't everything. I go, well, of course it's not everything. And all the good that he wants to do in the world, I could not think of a young man who would be, you know, who I would entrust with a lot of money uh, as far as the world goes. So I just don't see these things as, uh, as mutually exclusive. I'll go, you know, a tad deeper into it just because this is, this is the biggest, this is the biggest block for, for people. What David Osborne and I have sort of figured out is money equals freedom. So my mantra is freedom, the power to choose and create. So I get to choose what I do and when I do it. And, and I love creation. If that's a new company, if that's a new charity, these are, this is what I live for. So you get that power of freedom when you have wealth. Now, does wealth equal health? And the answer is sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't, right? Because when you have people, one of the charities that David gives to and I give to are building wells in, in, to bring fresh drinking water to little towns in, in Africa. Um, once, you know, once Steve Jobs is sick and dying, a billion dollars isn't going to save him. But I got to tell you, wealth doesn't equal health, but it, it, surely, it surely helps. Same thing with time. Money can't buy time back that you've already lost, but it certainly can allow you to choose the, the, the time that you're going to spend moving forward. And just the, the last thing I'm going to say on the mindset piece, because I got to tell you, uh, like I said, it's a whole first third of our book, and, and I love to talk about it. And that is, I was listening to a very advanced coach on a, on a big coaching call, and I'm telling you, this person is advanced. I, I have hired her before to coach me personally. She's great. At the very end of the call, somebody slipped in a question, and they said, hey, what is your secret to success? And you, and you know what she said? She said, focus and sacrifice. And I got to tell you, Pat, my gut just wrenched, okay? Because I absolutely believe that focus is necessary, but I do not believe sacrifice is necessary. And that's one of the things that stands in the, 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 mental, the mental gateway between people and wealth. So, so when I was teaching a class and I, and I, told everybody, write down what your income goal is in two or three years. And they write it down. And I say, raise your hand and tell me what's standing in the way between you hitting that goal. Very few hands go up. Very few reasons. Now I go, okay, great. Now add a zero. Hey, Real Estate Rockstars listeners. I am sorry to interrupt again, but I want to do a quick commercial break. But this commercial break is different. This is stuff that I think you need. And this is me talking to you about some of the stuff that we had. So, you know, recently we had a lot of people reach out to us and say, hey, why don't you do a real estate mastermind? Why don't you do something where a lot of the listeners can get together and do some Zoom calls and ask each other questions and really just try to brainstorm and work together? I mean, there's a million masterminds out there. I don't know if this is something that we really want to do or not. Or if we do, if we're going to limit it to maybe 20 or 30 people. We're just trying to figure out if any of you guys are interested. So if you have any interest at all in joining a mastermind with real estate agents around the country that are part of the Real Estate Rockstars Network, go to hybendigital.com forward slash mastermind and just join the wait list. It's just a really a form. It's just an interest list for us to see. Is this something we want to be doing? So that's, that's number one. Number two, you go to hybendigital.com forward slash foreclosures. We have a two day Mark thing that we just finished recording. Now it's also inside Rebus University. And so you can go to Rebus University and look at it. If you're already a member of Rebus, I mean, a lot of you guys are in the, you know, the monthly fee where you get access to everything. So we have a new course in there, 17 hours of content on how to buy foreclosures, on how to find deals, on how to, you know, do title, you know, go to auction. Also turn that into clients for your real estate agents, how you can turn somebody that's in default behind on their mortgages into a client. So go, you know, check out that course, especially for, you know, you can, you can buy the course now, but again, most of you guys already subscribed to all that. I just wanted you to know there's another 17 hours of content. Great, great content that I just recorded on there uh, that all of you guys have access to now at Rebus University. And then finally, the, we have software that we talk about on and off. It's called Padhawk. 
And in PadHawk, you can use that to go find leads. What uh, you know, so everyone is really, really busy right now, and we're so, so busy. People are selling, and they're saying there isn't enough product on the market, right? So they're, they're, they can't find houses. Well, PadHawk will help you find houses before they're listed. It helps you find owners that should be listing their properties or people that might want to get there. I recorded a quick video. It's like six or seven minutes long for you guys to look at, real estate agent specific on what how you can use the software in order to do it. So let's go to hybendigital.com forward slash leads. Again, there's a video in there. I talk about how you can use the software to do it. Check it out. If it's something that you like, you may want to sign up for it. 99 bucks a month, but it's nationwide, any city out there, and it is a great way to find houses. So right now people are saying there's lots of buyers, but we can't find enough houses. Well, maybe you can use this software to go find somebody that hasn't listed yet and make them an offer on their house. All right, back to your regularly scheduled program. Thank you for letting me interrupt you with that break. So somebody who had written down, maybe they're making 140, three years from now, they want to make 200. What's standing between 140 and 200? Oh, they can't think of anything, right? Now I say add a zero and I say, what's standing between you and earning $2 million? Every hand in the, in the class raises up in the air and now I, I can't write fast enough. And by the time I get done writing all the things that are going to stand between them and a 10 times goal, I just, I had, a, I had an epiphany. I just said, wow. You all have suddenly gotten a PhD in how you can't do it. And yet, Pat, you and I know that there are people, and I, and I spoke to one guy who, who had that $200,000 goal, and I said, what about $2 million? He said, you know what? I don't care. And there's no amount of money that's going to stop me from going to my kid's soccer game. And I just go, wow, once you're training your ear to hear this stuff, what this guy has decided is in order to make the money that he really wants to make, he has to miss his kid's soccer game. But Pat, you and I know that's not true. So <laughs> that's all I'm going to say on, on mindset, as you can tell from my passion about it and David's passion about it. That's why the whole first third of the book is about mindset, because that is the thing that stands in our way. Okay, great. So we got two down solid, and then you, and then you have the third one listed as mindset. So tell me about that. Right. Oh, you know what? And Pat, at this point, we've done everything on mindset that I'm going to do. That was a really nice piece. And, and we used a bunch of time. Like I said, mindset is the first third of our book. And that's about all I can do uh, in the course of this time uh, in order to get to number four and five. Okay. So, so basically we've got the baseline, we got goals, we got mindset, which uh, y- yes. you know, all flows really nice. Okay. So, so what's number four then? Mindset is really the be wealth aspect, which is the first part of our book. And then the rest of this stuff is really the do section. So what are the, what are the action steps? What things are we going to do to create wealth? And that's where find your baseline and set goals low in there. And then number four is also four and five are also, are also do things because that's what the, that's what the point of this seminar was that I give. Just, just, let's get some action steps that all of us can do. Um, so number four is modeling mentors and accountability. And the idea, I'm going to start with modeling. The idea of modeling is that, uh, and modeling and, and mentors really is someone has done it before. Model what they do. So anytime anyone asks me about a, a new business, new business concept, I always want to know what's out there right now. It's very easy to find out with the internet. Um, I'll give you an example, and this will flow into something I'll talk about in a few minutes, is that I'm, I'm taking my, I want to take my syndication business to a, to a new level. Now, syndication is doing real estate investments with investors' money. So the first thing that I, that I can do, uh, using that as an example, is I want to know what the top syndicators do in the country. And I can look them up online. I can say, hey, what's the top, what's their website look, look like? What do their deal points look like? I might look at one of their deals. I think it's okay to do that. If I find a deal that's great, I might invest with them. So it's okay to see how the competitors structure their deals. This is literally jet fuel on your business, okay? Because what you're doing is, you're taking the institutional, the universal knowledge of what's already out there instead of recreating the wheel. Does that make sense, Pat? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
Okay. Awesome. And then, and then with respect to mentors, uh, that's really finding somebody who's done what you want to do, who is where you want to be. You and David are, are experts at this. I know that. So I, I'm just going to touch briefly on it. And one, one little tweak on it is, uh, you know, people will say to me, well, how do I find a mentor? Identifying who you want as a mentor. Be purposeful about that, but that should be easy. As a mentor, I want to find, I want to find a relationship mentor, somebody that's in a great marriage for many, many years. I want to find a wealth building mentor, somebody who's built a lot of wealth. But where people get stuck is how do they essentially convert that? How do they make that happen? And one little tweak that I have on that is just come from contribution. So we know what we want from them. We want them to show us the way. Now, interestingly, you'd be surprised at how few people are asked that. So I would compliment them and say like, wow, you've created such tremendous wealth in your life. That's not a small feat. I wonder, and now here's a script. What might I do to earn the right to have lunch with you? Just using that script alone tells minute, you let me, let me, that let me break. Let me slow yeah. that down. What might I do to earn the right? To have lunch with you. Wow. What, what, how do you, you're like, if you're, if a mentor material, I mean, how mm-hmm. do you not answer that question? You know, I mean that in a way yeah. that's like, Hey, you got to do this. You got to do this. You got to do that. And if you prove to me that you're worthy, then, then yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll eat lunch with you. And, and every time I've asked that question and, you know, sorry, I said it like a little too fancy the first time I, you know, when I, when I really ask somebody, I just say, it might even be, I might see a public speaker and I would go up to a public speaker and say, I'm, I'm a huge fan of yours. I know this, that, and the other thing about you, I'm coming from contribution. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that, but I would say, I know all this about you. And then what I would say is, what can I do to earn the right to have, you know, a half hour of your time or take you to lunch or whatever? I've, I've actually never gotten a no on that. And that's in, in coming from contribution. And, and then the next piece is, I mean, and when you get to the meeting, I mean, please, I would have all sorts of action-oriented questions. I wouldn't waste the person's time. I would be very prepared. And mentors, you know, mentors hate when you come with a victim mentality. Don't come in and tell them why you aren't where you want to be at all. Uh, You ask them about them, and you say, where did you come from? How did you do it? What were your obstacles? Uh, How did you overcome your obstacles? What are some of your great life lessons? These are the sort of questions. You could even go online and Google what questions, ask a mentor. Okay. But I wouldn't go in and tell them a sob story. By that time, they're thinking that you shouldn't have earned the right to have lunch with them. So, uh, the next one's find an accountability partner. And that, that I, again, Pat, something you're an expert at really. And I would just say someone with similar aspirations, you know, you could use a coach. I love to do it, uh, in a way that's fun. I would be very careful to pick an accountability partner that's uh, definitely on the same same wavelength with you on on building wealth. You know, I know for a fact that uh, you and David Osborne picked each other as accountability partners, and one of the reasons the two of you picked each other was you were so ruthless in your accountability with each other. I'd be afraid to have you and David Osborne as an accountability partner. Okay, so. So I get that, but <laughs> well, you're going to see right. some of that ruthlessness. It looks like with uh, with all regards to to your book, because as you know, he's he's promised to to have this book done by the end of the year. He's going to shave his head in public in front of uh, everybody on January 31st. So, what uh, about that accountability? Do you think that's too extreme, or do you think that that's the type of accountability you need? You know, I have gone online and I wasn't able yet to find an app that would show me what I look like with a bald head. I'm thinking it's not pretty. So I signed up for that also. Oh, and you did. Uh, I'll be shaving my, oh yeah, I'll be shaving my head right alongside him. And I got to well, tell you, well, nothing. Will you get the book done or not? Uh, yes. Yes. Yes, we will. <laughs> and so, uh, you well, know. I'd, so, actually, I'd rather, part of me would rather see you guys <laughs> bald. So I'm hoping that you don't yeah. get the book done. <laughs> And that's why that Pat, that's why you're uh, a fun and amazing accountability partner. Because and I'm going to find know, that we, website just <laughs> for for giggles. I'm going to find a website yeah. and show you guys bald. This is going to yeah. be great. This is going to be great. yeah, yep, yep. I love it. I just have a note on that, and and it's really obvious. It's obvious that even the most disciplined players play harder when they have a coach to report to an accountability partner to report to 
or when they're part of a like-minded team or tribe. And I use that word tribe because I know that you guys, you and David and your crew do such great job with Go Abundance and it's added tremendous value for me. Uh, I know this is, you know, you didn't ask me to say this, but uh, that you couldn't be around more like-minded people that want to, uh, that want to hold you accountable. I, I, you know, I said I was going to have six pack abs, you know, when I was there, I'll have to send you the photo. I never had them before in my life. So there's all sorts of health now, do you and relationship. I do. I'm sending you the photo, Pat. That, if you uh, give amazing. me permission. So, yeah, a hundred percent. So yeah, because uh, how old are you, Paul? I'm 50. How the hell do you get six pack abs at 50? I've done 70 days of hot yoga in a row. That's yeah, awesome. that's one of them. Actually, you know what? I missed, right. I missed three days. So, so the other thing is don't think perfection. You know, if you think perfection, you know, I would have fallen off the train, you know, when I missed that one day. And uh, it turns out over 70 days, I've missed three days. But, you know, who's counting that, right? That's awesome, dude, because uh, last time I saw you, you were a little chubby. So what? how much weight uh, did yeah. you lose? I only lost about, uh, I have to look at my weight. I actually have to look at my weight and go abundance. I'd say I lost about 10 or 12 pounds. But, yeah. uh, you know, I added a bunch of muscle, too. So, you know, the, the photo that I have is, it's, it's uh, you know, it's in pretty uh, skinny shorts. So I, I'm going to send it to you and... Uh, and I'll tell you publicly, I don't give you permission to forward it, um, you know. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, I love it. All right. So, All right, so anyways, uh, we digress. We digress, brother. So, okay, so yeah. you're on number you, you were on number four, which is basically surround yeah. yourself with people that, number one, hold you accountable, and number two, yeah. inspire you to do more. Yeah. Also, look at the public Look at the public space to find, to find somebody that's doing what you want to do in a great way. And then look at the one-on-one space and get a mentor and, and come from contribution with that mentor and never bring them gripes or victim talk. And you'll, you'll build a great relationship with them. Um, and I would just want to say that, you know, our step one was your baseline. Okay. And what I would do is with my coach and my accountability partner or my mentor, is I, I'd, I'd throw the baseline down on the table, even if that baseline is my, in the minus. They will hold you accountable and they'll help you grow that baseline. So, uh, so revisit step one when you get to step four with these people. They're on your side. Um, and then the last one I have, step five, is, is get into action. And you can see how that really fits in, obviously, with the, with the do wealth section of our book. And, and, you know, I've got a lot to say about getting into action, including, you know, there's philosophical things about it. And I'll throw a few of them out. Uh, but I also want to tell folks stuff that they can do. So they hear this, they hear this podcast, they can run out and do it. And it's a, it's a step into building wealth. So like, I just want to say doing nothing is a choice. Sitting on the sidelines is a choice. The root of the word decide weird. The root of it is to cut off. Okay. And how is that? So when I'm sitting on the sidelines, I have finally have a few dollars to invest. As soon as I make a decision to invest in a, I got to invest in A, B, C, or D. Well, as soon as I decide to invest in B, I've cut off A and C and D I've cut them off. So, so that's why I just say that because I want to, I want to be in the shoes of the folks that or listen to this, listen to this podcast and let them know that they're not alone. Uh, you know, here's a funny quote, right? Funny quote. We've all heard it. Right. And that's what would you do if you weren't afraid? And geez, that's, that's inspiring. Except for guess what? I'm afraid. Okay. Right along with your listeners. And when I say afraid, I don't mean frozen afraid. I mean, I'm concerned every time I make an investment, I'm concerned. Am I making the right investment or not? That doesn't stop me from deciding. So, so what would you do if you weren't afraid? Boy, that's, that's lofty, cool stuff, but that's not, that's not helpful to me. I'll, I'll throw a few out to you that are helpful. And that is done is better than perfect. I know David Osborne says that one better than me. And I wish I could you know, done just pull that is quote. better than perfect. Done is better than perfect. So basically what you're saying is complete it. Don't worry about, you know, it being I- exactly right. And, and I'm just telling you, look, look into history and look at, look at your friends and look at, you know, the, the evidence is everywhere you look. And that's that, that the perfectionists are not getting it done. They get so little done, but it's done the right way. And really, truly, I have compassion for that because it doesn't, 
it doesn't come as much from wanting to get it right as it does from a fear of getting it wrong and what happened to us when we were, you know, 10 years old in school and you raise your hand. Well, I got a great answer. You raise your hand and, you know, the kids snicker, you answer the wrong thing. You know, we hate mistakes and yet mistakes are the things that teach us. So again, I'm not going to get way into the mindset, but I'll just say done is better than perfect. You can look into sports and you see it all the time. I mean, I know that Peyton Manning just broke some records but, you know, prior to that, the guy that threw the most touchdown passes in the NFL history was Brett Favre, who also threw the most interceptions. Uh, you know, these are examples. Peyton does, is not number one in interceptions, but guess what? He's in the top ten, and guess what else? He's still playing, which means he's going to throw more interceptions. So, you know, I hope that, I hope that inspires people. So now I'm going to tell you about some action steps. Um, and the first action step really is a step in a little different direction uh, from directly wealth building. And that is in your, you know, David, David and you uh, talk about vertical income and vertical income is the income that you get by working and horizontal income is the passive income that you get from investing and really building wealth is about investing. But I'll say first step in building wealth, as far as I'm concerned, is get very purposeful in your vertical income. So if you're a realtor, step one for building wealth, as far as I'm concerned, is spend more time lead generating and perfect lead conversion so that you're increasing your vertical income and you have more to invest. Yeah, so absolutely. That's side absolutely. Step. So, yep. and, and keep your expenses the same, right? Generate more yeah. income and keep your expenses the same. So let me let me try to uh, look at the global picture here and 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 recap these things here first. So, you know, at the beginning, okay, we've got a create know your baseline, right? Know where zero is, whether you're below or above it, know where zero is and then track every day or every month uh, where you are above it and hopefully everyone listening will 12x theirs like Paul has. As step 2, right? Is yeah. set goals. You say, okay, I'm, I'm at a baseline. Next year, I want to be worth a hundred grand. The year after that, I want to be worth two hundred grand. Then I want to be worth five million, ten million, whatever. Okay. Step three is basically having the mindset: be wealth, as you talk about in the book. Be yes. wealth, all encompassing. Think like you're rich, right? You were born yes. rich, like Bob Proctor says. Uh, number. Number four is surround yourself with people that are going to keep you accountable, right? If you're, if you're telling me you want to be a millionaire and you're at zero baseline, and then all of a sudden I see you driving a new Z- a Jag with a, with a $1,200 a month payment, hey, man, I got to call you out and be like, dude, that's not where you want to be because that's not helping you save money. If your goal is to, right. to save money, then how, how much did you save today? Right? How much did you yes. save this month? How much did you save this year? And then, of course, step five is uh, take action. Like I got a good friend of mine mm-hmm. who's a colonel in the army, and he has tons of underlings come to him on a, a daily basis with suggestions and thoughts and, and, and talking to him, sir, what about this? Sir, what about that? And his standard answer is, are you talking about it or are you being about it? Mm-hmm. And, wow. And, and, okay. And, yeah. And that's what you're saying, right? Yes. I like that one. Are you talking about it? Or are you being about it? Yes. Yes. That's so, right. So, because so, it's, often it's a lazy guy's thing or a lazy gal's thing is to ask the question, you know, uh, a great, a great mentor of mine when I, you know, and I would be careful with the questions I asked him, you know, ask thoughtful questions. And more than half the time he would say to me, you know, you know, the answer to that. <laughs> I was like, oh, right. yeah, yes. yeah, I think right. you're right. Right, indeed. Um, so back on that, you know, increasing your vertical in- income, and this is again into action piece. And then the second part is graduate into the world of the wealthy. And what I mean by that is start investing. And I'm going to tell you how to start investing because I want to give some action steps. And that is the first thing I would do if you haven't already done it is I would open a tax deferred retirement fund. You can do it for free at Schwab or at Fidelity. I haven't used Fidelity. I'm not even sure they're the greatest, um, you know, but I know they're low cost and you can open it with very little money. Even if you're barely making your bills, I think going down and opening a retirement account and getting into the habit 
of putting a certain amount of money in that retirement account. It does not matter how much. It's the activity right. that matters well, more than the amount. So to invest, hopefully in yes. real estate or something really well, related. That's, well, and what I'm talking about with the tax deferred one, you couldn't take out until you were you were retired. So I would put a smaller amount in because I because my primary investments are. Uh, our, our real estate for sure. And, and so that's the first thing I would do is make sure you have a retirement fund because you can, you can invest tax free dollars in that. Um, and the only money that I have in, in the, the wealth that I have, the only money that I have in the stock market is in my retirement fund. All of the rest of my investments are, are in real estate. So I want to tell you that in 25 years, I've never lost money on one real estate deal. That includes the downturns in the market. And people are always, people are always blown away by that. And I'm going to tell you a few simple rules that I use that if your listeners use, I believe will work the same for them as they work for me. And that is the first one is buy where, you know, okay. So when there was this tremendous flooding of money into these various places like West Coast of Florida, and I remember people coming to these deals, and they were blowing up in Arizona and Texas and all sorts of stuff. The only place that I invest in at all is Pittsburgh, which is where I grew up, and it's where I started my, my investment portfolio. And I have you know over 700 units of, of rental property between Pittsburgh and Los Angeles. Los Angeles is the only other place that I invest. The reason why I'm here, I know what the trends are. I know the neighborhoods. Real estate, unlike the stock market, is something that you can master. Um, it's something that all of us can master. So buy where you know, that's number one. And number two is what I call buy value, right? And buying value, boy, that sounds simple and it is simple, but what you're essentially doing is you're buying the, you know, and I'll be extreme about it. You're buying the worst property in the best neighborhood. Now, obviously you don't have to buy the worst in the best neighborhood, but you're certainly not buying the best, the best property in any neighborhood. You're buying a property at the very low end of a good neighborhood. And if you want to protect yourself against downturns, go where, you know, there's an economic engine. So buy near a hospital, uh, buy near other institutions like big universities, big universities, never run out of students, hospitals, never run out of patients, doctors, nurses, staff. So if you buy the ramshackle apartment building, that's like two or three miles from the, from the big hospital, you will have over time a good value. And then, and then the last rule is make sure it cash flows. You know, what happens if you buy, you're buying this ramshackle property? Oftentimes it happens. People want more than it's worth. So I, I can buy a property that does not have cash flow or has poor cash flow, very poor cash flow, if I'm buying value because I know I can do the research and say, well, this thing's only 60% rented. It's ramshackle. The first thing I do is I clean up the, I clean up the exterior, uh, make it look nice. I make it safe. It's very inexpensive nowadays to put a security lock on everything. The 60% that's already filled, I don't mess with those tenants. The 40% that's vacant, I go in and I just do a, a cosmetic redo. So I make sure the carpets are clean I, you know, or replace them. I make sure that the locks on the door are safe. I replace the appliances where necessary. And then I go out and I rent that apartment basically at an entry level for that particular good neighborhood. And if you do that, if you look at what's the cheapest, what's the cheapest rental going into a nice neighborhood, if you go around, you're going to find all garbage. So now uh, they look at they look at mine. They go, well, you know, it might not be the prettiest building, but it is clean. It is safe. It is lit. The doors locked. Uh, the the unit is perfectly clean. I, I can go from sixty percent rented to a hundred percent rented in one uh, in in one rental cycle. And and that's why even in a dramatic downturn, uh, I, I've I've never lost a dime. I'm going to say two things to you um, that that I get when I teach this. You know, one of them breaks my heart because I see these realtors that have uh, identified phenomenal opportunities for investors, for friends, for all their clients, and they own no real estate, okay? And the first thing they say is, oh, well, you know, I don't have the money. I will tell you that on my first two or three or four deals, I had no money. And what I did was I did the legwork. 
So to a realtor that really knows their area, they're going to know a good deal. And if you find a good deal, I believe you can find the money to put with that deal. Yeah. So that's a step. Well, there's a will, that's there's a, a way, right? Yeah. And, and, and the thing, and, and if you're following your steps, you're going to save money. Now, you know, you know, I like to say you got to hustle first, save money second, and then, and then you don't need to find these no money down deals, you know, put 20% down, put, you know, whatever you can down, do a real investment and just build on that. I mean, that's really yes. what, what the realistic uh, nine out of 10 people do, you know, rather than something that just sounds good and uh, in a TV show for, you know, how to buy real estate, no money down. So yeah, this is great stuff, yeah. Paul. Well, listen, I really appreciate you sharing these five tips. This is, this is great. I can't wait for the book to come out. I can't wait. Guess sometime within the next year, it looks like maybe not, but you may might just, if you shave your head, you guys shave your heads, <laughs> then it get, kind of gives you a, a at least a year extension on getting this sucker out. But, but anyways, I can't wait to see it. And, and, uh, I wish you the best of luck with all it. And thanks a lot for coming back on the show. Pat, thank you very much. I really, really appreciate it. Um, you know, I, if you guys, I'm doing some inspirational stuff on, on Instagram. Uh, it's just at Paul Mark Morris on Instagram. M A R K. Uh, is my is my middle name would love would love a follow on instagram or facebook reach out love to get in touch with uh with you folks and hear how you have put some of this stuff to use if you use one of them i know it'll help you uh, if you use more that would be great pat thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk to your amazing audience really appreciate it you better, brother. All right. Talk to you soon. Rockstar Nation. Thank you for listening to Real Estate Rockstars. Listen, I need a favor. If you find this free content helpful, if you find our downloadable items from each guest helpful, please, I need you to pull out your pointing finger. Yes, the one finger that points at people and hit subscribe. Yes, subscribe. The more subscribers we get, the better we look in the ratings and the easier it is to get guests like Robert Kiyosaki, Barbara Corcoran, all the players that are on million dollar listing in the different cities. All that stuff makes it easier the more subscribers we get. So please subscribe. And listen, there's a lot of places you can leave comments. There's a lot of places you can like. We're on Facebook. We have an Instagram page. Instagram page is I am Pat Hyben. The Facebook is Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Feel free to leave us comments there. The most popular form of commenting seems to happen on YouTube. Yes, for whatever reason, it's a, a very open environment. So just go to YouTube and go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Leave us comments there. Some of them we will read on the show. We love your feedback. So thanks, guys, and I hope you are having a great day. Oh, and also, listen, if you're going to subscribe and you haven't already left a review on iTunes, please do that too. Have a great day and thanks so much, Rockstar Nation. I really appreciate you.